Recording in progress. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 71 of Wayne's World and Kelly. Special guest is Sandy Wiesinger. Sandy is a friend of mine, and she actually has quite the story to tell regarding all of her uh, her experience in corporate American sales, and right now is a, a part-time lecturer at Baylor University, the Center for Professional Selling. Welcome, Sandy. Hey, thanks, Wayne. We got, we've got some history. I'm really happy to be here. A whole Definitely. different context than all, over the how many years we can't tell. We do. Um Wow, I don't even know where to start with you, but let's go into the beginning of your 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 professional career and how it started with several blue chip companies that are, are actually listed on LinkedIn, and then and then kind of tell us the experience that you gathered and how you ended up today where you're at in academia and sharing what you know. Okay, sure, thanks. So, you know, Wayne, you and I grew up in a little town in Wisconsin, went to school, and. Um, I think similarly, we're kind of like not sure what I want to do or what sure, you know, this 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 phenomenon continues today with young people expecting that we're supposed to know what we want to do. But I in college ended up with an um, an internship at IBM, um, which led me into working in technology um, for a small IBM business partner and spent a couple of years realizing all that I didn't know. And um, in in a sales role at that in that that time, which I was completely unprepared for, um, but then I then I and I got to go through IBM's sales program as a part of that, which was really again um, lucky fate, you know, God's plan. I don't know, but it was it was very formative for me. Um, but I ended up then going back to graduate school, and after graduate school was then when I um, after that experience got to go to work for Lucent. And then at Ericsson um, and moved actually, where, which is actually where I moved to Dallas, and then Microsoft. But through, through all those times, you know, Wayne, there were, there's some themes that were themes from our childhood days. You know, of work hard, be disciplined, do your best, um, build trust with people, solve problems, um, take responsibility. Some of those things that kind of led me through my sales journey. And when I found that I was moving into management, I was less fulfilled than when I actually got to work with clients and help, you know, build partnerships and solve problems together. Um, that has always really inspired me and given me a lot of energy. So I've actually um, now shifted gears. I left Harvard's corporate learning group at the end of August so that I can coach and teach and consult um, really help to equip, encourage, and inspire the next generation of of leaders in the areas of sales, business development, and leadership. So that's in a, kind of in a nutshell, I guess, how I've gotten to where I am. Well, I think I think you and Kelly have something in common because uh, Kelly worked for uh, for Big Blue also. Maybe oh, really? both of you can talk a little bit about about what you went through and share what that looked like and and how both Kelly and you are have brought forth some of these sales principles. Yeah. Right so now. Kelly, did you go to sales school? In Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, um, Atlanta. I'm employee number 323340. <laughs> um, one of millions. And it was, it's when I was first exposed to Hooters, um, the restaurant. <laughs> the, um, we were down in Atlanta and every, we, they put us in those townhouses. Yeah. Outside of the Atlanta. rental cars, the like brown deltas or whatever they were. Well, we had um, Crown Victorias. And okay, so we yeah, looked that's... like a bunch of FBI agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suits. And and I, I remember we had a I, one guy we, we had, I think, uh, you know, you go down a few times and you, you're they, they keep yeah. you work and then they send you back to sales school. And then, you know, and, and it was I thought it was a brilliant way to do it. And I. I use the techniques with my business partner today that I learned back in the eighties for sure from IBM. So I, I'd say it was a pretty good class, pretty good classes and in, in, in education, 100%. but it was also just wildness. I mean, it's, but we had one guy in our, in our place, the first time, my first several weeks there. And this guy was married. He would, he would meal prep. We never even heard of meal prepping. We were lucky if we ate, you know, during the day. And, um, and he'd go out running every morning and running every night. And then there are the rest of us that were just nuts. But I, yeah. I never saw his sales numbers. I don't I don't, I don't think he ever really went yeah. anywhere. 
the rest of us. But those were those were those were those were early days for doing role plays. Like they had a lot of retired IBMers, and they you were slotted into rooms, and you went and you managed a sales call, and you you know you had to do every single part of it. And then we had the capstone. If you remember, there might have been a lot of playing around, but you came home exhausted because of you had sat in the room with PowerPoints all day long because that's what it was, and a book. And then they and then they would assign you to these role plays with retired people who were like completely they didn't mean to be intimidating. But, you know, here you are like in your 20s and you're like, holy cow, I'm learning. I don't know if you remember by Carsa Glapa Glapper. You remember that? No, it was um, it was because we were learning like the software, um, the general ledger, accounts payable, sale, receive order entry, you know, that were like all these uh, uh, things that we had to remember and then apply in those role plays. So what a great experience though. And but was, now that, that, that was game. way, that was the only one in the day of how, only way to get sales development that I knew, at least that was as well known. Um, but, and that was back in, that was many years ago, obviously. And you know what the greatest thing that they had for a salesman back then? Because I was, I'm in my twenties. I don't have zero facial hair. I, I look like I'm wearing my dad's suits. I don't know why I couldn't get a suit that looked like I was, it was made for me. But um, I'd walk in, they'd look at me like, who is this punk kid? And then I'd whip out that white card with the blueprint that said IBM on it. And the doors would just bust open and I, I angels would sing because they did such a great job back then of, of really controlling the market on big box computers. I mean, it was impressive. And yeah, well, you I, know, you remember, you remember nobody ever got fired for hiring IBM, right. like exactly. working with them on their solution. So we, we, we knew that was, we also though, at that time knew that was a high bar. Like we needed to live into that standard. It wasn't like, oh, we can take advantage of that. But it was, I remember it being like, you need to like, you need to deliver to this level. <laughs> Your dark suit tough. and all. Because yeah. this, for me, I was there in the in the eighties, and then I just couldn't do it anymore after seven years. I obviously I, I wanted out of a suit. And I wanted to be a twenty year old because I hadn't been one yet because of because what we were doing. And at one point when I was in D.C., I was a cleanup team where they would sell all this stuff that they couldn't deliver in software. And so our job was to go in there and make nice and make them feel like they won by basically not suing us. It was. That was, and that was very, and that was on the job. That wasn't class work. That was, you know, on the job work. And that was very powerful. They sold, a, I won't mention the name. I actually remember the name of this big auto family that had, you know, I don't know, 15 stores and they sold them million dollars worth of software and hardware and, and they couldn't deliver. And we were able to keep us from, you know, getting too tarnished from that. But yeah. that, you know, we're always talking about with Wayne about, we learned so much from the from the failures. That was a huge failure of IBM trying to deliver software they didn't quite have designed yet. And that's kind of been, I think, the trend for, for a lot of years it was like that. But boy, did I learn a lot about how to handle people that way. Because you yeah. and we did we we made them winners with the hardware, but we, we made yeah. them go to other sources to get the software to run on it. For sure. Did you have any fun experiences yeah. like that? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, no, not, but I, I do remember. You went to left me a lot with IBM and, and their partners. Some of the companies you mentioned. Uh, well, telecom. I, yeah, no, that was after, after I went to graduate school. Then I ended up more in, I went to work for AT&T, which was the part that spun off to be Lucent back in the day. Um, right. And they hadn't hired, they hadn't hired people from the outside for many years. And so, that was a pretty interesting, there were like 30 of us that came in, but those were go-go days, like because they hadn't hired people in so long from the outside, they, they, we got their ear, you know, the executive's ear and those experiences then. Um, but, but what I found going back to Wayne's question is I found myself going back towards, I don't want to do the internal stuff. I want to go be with clients again, you know? So oh, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. It becomes kind of like a magnet because yep. there's, there's something bigger than just the money that comes in being able to build long-term relationships and deliver value and 
become a become a a thought partner and a, you know and be able to to work with people in that way and have so, them understand that you are a partner of theirs yeah you know it's you never know, you guys say it too and you know it too nobody likes to be sold to but we all love to buy so and we all right. need relationships and we value relationships and so that's where at the end of the day, you know, that's what we get to do. Just think of all the different organizations you've gotten to work with and the interesting people that you've met over the years that we have this incredible opportunity to do in the role of as a as a consultative seller. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you're doing strictly consulting and, and training of younger people? Well, so, so now it's time, you know, I've had a, after carrying a quota for about what 25 years i um i decided it's like so what's what's next for me how do i give back what's my purpose in a different way and so my mission now is to to help pour into the next generation like so many that poured into me because because they did um and helped me to be successful so i'm coaching and teaching and um some doing some consulting with an emphasis on this next this next generation. Um, and I found that like the, the coaching side, I never would have envisioned myself as in this kind of a role, but the, the interest in being coached and having a partner again to come side by side, you know, when you think about your son and how like there's, they just have questions. They just, you know, to have somebody that can help them think through things, not that they're they can't figure it out themselves, but some of them don't have, they don't have the runway that we have with all the, the experience either. Um, and then um, we were talking a little earlier about like, we got to go through the sales program at IBM, but there's those, I don't know that IBM still does that anymore. I don't know that it's that extensive. Um, and, and as we were saying, you know, over 50% of the kids graduating, young people graduating from college are going to take their first jobs in sales and there are over 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States and just over a hundred of them have sales programs. So that's about less than 3%. So like what's wrong with that picture? Um, Everything. So that's, a, that's I think a part that I'm quite passionate about too, is how do, <laughs> how do those of us that are, okay, I'll speak for myself, me as a dinosaur, I won't say you are, but you know, how do we, how do we support this next group that's coming in? Because it's a career that's obviously kept all of us really engaged and inspired and given you a, a great life. Sandy, haven't you been talking to any of your faculty members at Baylor? So I know that um, you and me, what, you mean, Kelly, we could talk about sales literally for hours. And I know we have like Sandy, when you and I were in, um, um, in Dallas and we went out to lunch. OK, I was telling you my story of how I am an accumulation of, you know, YouTube motivational books and seminars all into one. Mm -hmm. And I, I know Kelly and I strongly believe this, too, is that sales is a performance. OK, now. Where do you come out on that? So I'm, I guess I'm saying that sales reps are are made, not born or whatever. I mean, everybody would like some help in a career that they're going into and you are providing that. Mm -hmm. But I cannot believe that like my my career was like cobbled together with scotch tape in paper clips, yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when it could have been, wow, if this was offered to me, you know, at university of Minnesota, Mankato in 1984, yeah. I would have went on this track. Yeah. So tell me how that looks as far as everything that you've done from learning at IBM, taking yeah. stuff and in, in this, and then building it. And then you're offering with kids now. Yep. So you, you said, let me ask you, you said you and Kelly believe that sales is a performance. What do you mean by that? Kelly, you can take that one. I'm filibustering. Take that one, or I can. I'm going to let ahead. you take it. No, I wanna... Okay, so here, here's a good example. <laughs> when I was at, I was at a client Christmas party a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago in Chicago, and it's a client I've had for over a decade. They they know me very well, but they were asking me questions about like, what's it like? 
to be in sales and, you know, what was your background, this, that, and the other thing. And I tell them what, what we're doing right now, uh, us talking right now here in this room is a performance. When I go back to my room, I'll read a little bit and I will be mentally wiped out. I'm putting all of my energy into asking yeah. questions and listening, which is one thing that I was taught, self-taught to do, okay? Um, from, from the suit that I'm wearing to the hair that I have left, to the eye contact that I make, to how I listen and how I enunciate. All of that is a performance mm -hmm. to be fully engaged in the present moment with my client. And it takes a lot of mental work. That's right. what I mean about okay. A performance. Okay, thank you. Because I, I, I interpret it as like a performance on a stage. It's not about you. Selling is not about you. Selling Never. is about the client. And in order to do Absolutely. that, you, yep. you are... 200% focused on listening, yep. trying to process, um, put your put your ideas together so that you are wiped out. But there's yep. a methodology that over the years, Wayne and Kelly, both of you, I'm sure, have developed on your own in, in our cases. I have some, you know, as you've adopted them through things you've read, you know, I have a call process in my head, relate, discover, advocate, support. It's from the counselor process, which I learned years ago. I mean, there are just fundamental things that you that you follow. Um, and there are over the over time, though that structure has been put into place so that now we can help young people learn how to how do you shake somebody's hand? How do you interact when you how do you introduce yourself? I mean, these are some things that they're not learning in high school and they are. And then I mean, I remember growing up, my dad, you, you know, was always this respect for authority and he taught us how to shake hands, but I don't know that that's really generally happening anymore. So in the, in the schools, then how do you, how do you set an agenda for a meeting? How do you like that's step number one in building trust? What are we going to do today? How are we going to do it? And then what, what's in it for you so that people know that you're intent, right? Like you're, you're setting expectations so they're clear, but you have, to, this isn't like, nat, this doesn't come naturally. For those of us that have been doing it for a while, we're, we're not as consciously competent anymore because we've just been, we've become in, you know, unconscious of our competence. We're not aware of what we're doing. So it's really sitting down. This has caused me in the last you know year or so to sit down and say, what do, like, what are these approaches that we use uh, many of many of them are being taught, you know, in the schools where it is being taught, but but really helping this next group of of young people to understand, like, so that they can be confident when they go into a, a BDR role or an SDR role or an account manager that there is some structure. There's some you can you can role play like Kelly and I did, and you'll get more comfortable with what that process looks like. It's not just you throw it out there and people say, well, I don't know what I'll do. So I'll go into sales. Like, yeah, it's just not quite like that anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, I want to, I want to put in my two cents. I think the worst thing that could ever happen to the profession of sales, if universities try to lead it, because I think they are disaster. And I, and I'm, I, I don't think they're capable of teaching what needs to be taught. Yeah. I teach people all the time. I, I, I have a, an owner's rep firm. I have two business partners. We have a great team. I'm the only sales guy, but we work with our, our, but everybody's a salesperson. That's actually a project manager because they're constantly working with our clients. So we teach them internally how to do better at communicating and working with people. I also work with a ton of, of roofing companies, um, construction companies and any of the architects, engineers, um, attorneys. I tr work with all of them and it's always like a sales class. I, if it's somebody who's trying to sell to me, I try to help teach them how to sell. And but because I think they're not getting it anywhere well. else. What's that? Because they're not getting it anywhere else. Yeah. But I don't, th I don't think a university, I don't think it's, I think you'd end up getting those who can do those who can't teach. I think on the job training for sales and then people taking that ownership. I, I, haven't, I haven't dialed it in ever in my life. I am constantly reading books. Now YouTube's a big event. I go to seminars several times a year. 
I'm constantly looking at my peers and I always want to, you know, better my, my position on what I'm doing just because that's the way we're driven as salespeople. Um, well, and it is a chosen career. It's not something I was born into. People go, oh, you're just a natural. Well, you know, it's sort of like the actor that, you know, finally makes it or the, the athlete that finally makes it. People don't understand what you went through to get there. Yeah, any, anybody, oh, anybody, it, anybody can develop into a, into a, into a great sales executive. But I will, I, I will push back on you that this, that, that academia can't help with sales. Cause I think I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Cause I think there is, there's an important element of this. Um, and, and the people that I've had the, the pleasure of working with in academia on sales have very practical experience that they're bringing to the classroom. And they're able to marry that with a structure that gives, gives everybody, the students that are graduating in from with a, I was involved with the TCU sales certificate program and with Baylor Pro Sales, they're three to five years ahead of everybody else because they, of what they've been exposed to. They're being exposed to companies, to different industries. They're, they're role-playing. They're going to competitions and competing against other sales professionals. Um, they're learning a lot of ways to, to manage the sales process. They're learning about forecasting. They're learning about a lot of the stuff that you probably have to spend time teaching people because they haven't gotten it anywhere else. So that you could, ideally, if you could have people coming out and then you contextualize their sale, their, their experience into your selling environment, that would be ideal to me. <laughs> I think it's very difficult to sell somebody a $40,000 a year, four-year program to go out and try to, and then, because I think sales is the true raw, either you make it or you don't. I mean, there's some companies out that are paying big salaries, but for the most part, you're generated on, on commissions, which a lot, what a lot of the reasons why we get into it. So, so someone to go out and get 160 grand in debt so they can go out and sell. I don't, I don't know if that's even the right, they better be four years ahead, but I just don't see universities providing that type of, of training. I think well, I, I it was a different time and I thought it was great. But I'll tell you what, I learned a thousand times more selling cars afterwards. After I left IBM, I went and sold cars. That's why I really look at you. You want to talk about role playing. You're, I'm role playing over and over again with clients every day. And it was hmm. it was real. It was much more real. The buyer of a of a, of something for themselves versus the buyer for a company are two different things. And you made the well, comment. B2B no and B2C, yes. Yeah, so I'm, 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 my, my experience is B2B. So for sure, I, I can't I've done it all. B2C. Now, I like to do, I've done everything in sales and I, I think everybody should, you know, sort of like I, I wish everybody go join the military for two years and I think they should come out and, 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 and you know, sell water treatment center uh, systems or, or cars or something for a couple of years. I think that's where you really get a lot of traction. Not that there's anything wrong with university education, but I think in, in 2024, I don't know if the cost of education is ever going to balance out with the rewards of, of real selling on the, on the job training, as we like to call it. Well, one, one thing that, that, that we were, one thing that we were talking about before we hit the record button is um, what we're going to say is kind of the lack of, uh, I don't know, legitimacy in sales. Cause you know, we were talking about, what's the problem? How come more universities are not accrediting this profession giving, give, you know, giving people some a head start. Mm -hmm. um, Sandy, I think your, your, your academic arena that you're in right now to articulate the message is something that certainly I think can, can help, you know, lift the tide, lift the boat. Kelly has a good point too, though. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of puzzled on this because you two both had formal training with at the time, Exactly. probably the best the best company in the country okay exactly again like we we know my story i don't need to keep repeating it i i i'm self-taught i would have loved to have had an opportunity to go through the things that sandy was talking about to lay the groundwork mm -hmm. for my career into sales rather than rolling the, the dice hoping that it was going to work out which i'm very lucky i'm glad it did mm -hmm. now my my son is going to be watching this. Okay, he knows that we're having this, and he he loves sales. 
And he, he probably will be going into that when he gets done with his four-year degree. Sandy, what advice would you give him? Well, wow, that's a great question, Wayne. First of all, I would love to talk with him. I think you know that. But um, and I I I do agree with you. There's a there's a there's a foundation and a structure that you get through like the an IBM program. There's just some confidence that you build. And I will say to kind of wrap up the whole university things, the students that are graduating from some of these programs and going into sales are are receiving the highest starting salaries of anybody in the university. So to say that companies don't recognize and appreciate that people are coming in with some sort of a, you know, with a, not even just some sort of a very strong foundation is, is key. So what I would say, you know, um, is find some, find some mentors, find some people who will, come beside you and help you and coach you and encourage you. And if, if remind me your son's name again, I always want to say Jake, but that's Jake. Okay. I want to say Bryce, but you know who that is. <laughs> um, right. Hey, Jake. Jake. <laughs> yeah, Jake. Um, hey, Jake. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm sorry that you have to deal with this, but that's. I see him going to work for right? State Farm. Don't get to pick your, you don't get to pick your family. But anyway, um, your, your discipline your curiosity, your your care of people um, will and your and and your continuous learning is what will make will help you to get to where you want to be. But you have to stay humble. You have to always know that your your um, what you do is your number, but the relationships that you build both with customers and with people that you work with. Selling is a team sport. So those those relationships are really critical. You know, don't ever burn a bridge. Suck it up and deal if if when things are hard. Um, so those are a few of the words, Wayne, that I would say. And I've had students ask me, I've had, you know, young people ask me like, how do I like set myself apart when I'm with all these people and da, da, da. And it's like, be you, be yeah. you. Don't ever stop being you. Yep. Be professional, well, be who you are. but be you. That's it. You're right, Sandy. It, yep, be you. It, it, it's that true, authentic self yeah. that you are. That's that's how you can set yourself apart. I agree. That's awesome. I find Bring that people pause. have to always self. It seems like the younger people that I see, they're, they're so sensitive. And you have to be very critical every time you're in front of a client and when you walk away, you have to look at what was your strength, what were your weaknesses, what could you have improved on and what did you really capitalize on? And you have to remember that. And that's yeah. that's something that it's, I, you know, you're right when you said it's humbling. Nothing's more humbling than sales. I mean, it's, yeah. It, yeah. but you got, you got to be strong. You know, I, I always say I love living next to the beach because if I have a bad phone call or a bad meeting with a client or whatever, I just go east until I hit the ocean and life gets better after about five minutes and you can go back out and do it all over again. It's, yeah. a, it's a constant reset, but you got to figure out what did you do wrong and what did you do right? And that just, that's a, that's a personal development that people have to let their ego, ego not be so fragile to do that. Yeah. Well, and I have, a, I have a little performance model that I, that includes that reflection piece. You know, you, when you think about, in fact, I would, share this with Jake or anybody others, but like over time, how do you, how do you secure performance? So let me just use an example. In order to learn how to drive a car, you first have to have a mindset that you're, you're able to drive a car. Like if you're going to go into selling, you have to believe I can do this. That self-belief, that mindset is the is step number one. Then you have to go acquire some knowledge. You need to you know, go to class or read books or watch videos, whatever you need to, you need to, you need to understand what is selling, what is B2B, what is B2C, what is built, how do you build trust? Then you start to develop some skills. So you learn and, you know, Kelly, you and I in IBM sales school, they started teaching us, how do you introduce yourself? How do you go start a call? How do you set an agenda? And then you have to then you, then you have the discipline to use those things, right? That's a key part of selling. You may know this, you may be able to do it, but you have to do it. Even the stuff you don't like, you have to have the discipline. Most <laughs> importantly, you have to apply the things you don't like doing. 
Yes, until it becomes a habit. And then, you know, you're, you don't want to lose consciousness. Of, you don't want to become unconsciously competent. But then, but the most critical part of this, of this whole process is reflection and feedback. You need, you know, we all need to stop and reflect on what did we do? What went well? What didn't go well? We also need to get feedback. You know, Wayne needs to tell me if like that was terrible and here's why, or that was great and here are the things you should build upon. We've got to have that reflection and feedback piece. And then, you know, you think about athletes, that whole process is what athletes go through. So it's a whole process of what you learn. You, 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 you go to the driving school to learn the knowledge. You go practice with a driver. You then take the test, you know, but when you take the test, you have to have the discipline to stop at the stop sign, no rolling through. And then as you go on, you know, now you drive out of your neighborhood and Hopefully you stop at the stop sign, but you have that discipline until you get some feedback from the red lights in the rear window that say you didn't stop at the stop sign. <laughs> Opposed to driving a car, I would like to switch that to driving a golf ball because it is such a mental game. And if you, you know, people hit the water all the time because that's what they're thinking about. You know, and if they're if they're thinking about the center of the fairway 290 yards down the fairway, they have a better chance of hitting there. And I, yeah. I like to use that analogy. And that's why so many people in sales love golf is because it's it's very self-reflective. What, how the hell did I hit the ball that bad? Or yeah. wow, how did I hit it that good? Mm -hmm. uh, Mark McCormick, who wrote Everything They Don't Teach at Harvard Business School. Um, then he wrote a sequel to Everything They Still Don't Teach. Or two great books that every salesperson should have, not only in their library, but they need to read it too. I know some great people that have purchased a lot of great books. They just don't read the darn things. You know, yeah. and then I, I think the Bible's a big a lesson book too. But yeah, um, for sure. for but sure. a lot of that stuff, you know, the, the difference between sales and any other job is it, it it takes a lot of you know you can have ten people selling, and you're going to have all kinds of success and, and failure rates, and you know because it it is such a personal thing that you have to drive yourself to do every day. It's so how do you, yes we'll see it and I, I Kelly we could go on because I. How do you then hire people that you can that you can depend that you're going to have consistent results if everybody's off doing their own thing? You've got to have when some. When I'm in a role where I'm hiring salespeople, I usually look to character of the person. I don't care about too much, but you know, I you know, I I, I want to go with you know. You all say be yourself. You know, at IBM we weren't ourselves. We really weren't. IBM made you know the guys wear white shirts and 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 dark suits. And lace up shoes. We weren't allowed to wear loafers for a long time. You know, they go nuts. I remember, I, I, I think it was at the DC office. I actually had a third level manager that said I, we could wear loafers. And I remember going out and buying loafers again. But I mean, they were very strict on how they wanted you to look. You, They wanted you to look a certain way. I think some people, especially younger people, they've gotten a little bit too wild with the color of their clothes, the color of their hair, the tats that can be seen. I've become much more comfortable with it. Now I'm used to it. But I think there's a lot of people on the other side of the purchasing process that aren't crazy about people being to themselves. You know, you have to remember, it's, it's a business too. You have to operate in the confines of a, of a business. So, you know, be, but what, what you be wear the best isn't... you can be, but don't, don't, you know, there's a time for work and there's a time for play. Yeah. You know, I watch people in, in the industries go out and party like rock stars with, with clients. I personally think that's a terrible idea. Uh, maybe people are successful. At it. I don't like it at all. I like people to be professional when they're, you know, if you go to a happy hour, if you have one beverage, that's fine. You tie one over and you, you're the life of the party. Maybe not such a good idea. That's the old man and me talking right now, but I was like that when I was younger too. I, did I take you too far off the mark? <laughs> No, I, well, I'm, I was, I'm, I'm not sure what you wear is who you are. So that's the thing. I think it's what you, what, you, who, who you are is in your, your heart, your soul, your mind, and, and you can put on a dark suit or a, or pink hair and you're still that core. I think that's one of the challenges, you know, what we have, we as this generation have to get past to that. It's not, um, cause we're, we're perceived in that same way by the next generation that can be you know, polo shirts and turtlenecks and kind of. <laughs> well, right. I, 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 I think sometimes 
you know, kids want to be, they already want to be successful right when they get out the gate and they, they need to earn their stripes. They need to have the experiences, you know, they want to roll out and get a, a six figure base pay. To be honest with you, if I'm looking for salespeople, if you roll in wanting that kind of salary, I'm not interested in you. I'm really not. Mm -hmm. And I, as a, and as a salesman, if I go out to work somewhere, pay me zero, pay me for oh, yeah. results. That's what I want. Cause I'm going to get in your pockets a lot deeper. So, right. you know, I, you know, and I, I, I mean, I, to me, that's just, that's, 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 that's really sales. I, I'm a risk taker. You know, I've started companies. I've, I've built other companies. I like the risk factor in sales. I don't want to make somebody so comfortable that they're completely set the first day they show up for work. It's not a law firm. This is sales and it's ugly. <laughs> Well, look at the time. I think uh, we went yeah. about 10 minutes over. Um, Sandy, we do definitely appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, sharing your experiences and how it leads into academia also. Um, definitely appreciate you. And do you have any parting thoughts out there? Well, I, um, I, I, I thank you guys for the opportunity and to banter a little bit. Um, we don't, we agree on some things and we don't agree on some things and that's okay too. That's why we do that's this. Good. Yeah, it is Absolutely. good. Absolutely. That's, that's what we need. The world needs more of. I yeah. never want to buy, yeah. hire a bunch of me either. <laughs> I, I've been on sales teams where someone will interview someone. They'll go, well, this guy's, you know, this guy's nothing like you. I go, that's exactly what we need. We don't, yeah. I want diversity and personalities and techniques too. And then we can grow from each yeah. other, not just be a bunch of cookie cutters. So yeah, definitely. So you guys awesome. keep up your great work. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, Sandy. We appreciate right. Thank you. Taking the time. Awesome. Go Dallas. You live in a great <laughs> city. Right. Yep. Tell Derek and um, Nick we said hi. All right. Yeah. Bye bye.